your girl jim jim of vibes to jim jim again so guys if you are seeing this face for the first time please subscribe and if you have subscribed thank you so much so today guys we are going for an event it's one woman peace and unity convention yeah it's happening live at the icc abuja that's a what's it called international conference center abuja so guys we're going to be seeing Beautiful and intelligent speakers from the world. World, the world best speakers. Yeah, guys. So, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you. See you later. He, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, never ever disrespect to the people who come to him for the solution of the mistakes. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam showed the parts of the guidance which reflect Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam showed the parts of the guidance which reflect the life which is called the past He Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they called him truthful and honest because of his capabilities of living the life which was called the past the virtue of his life was to spend the love adore or whatever he get to the people wherever he met he got admiration wherever he went people loved him for his abilities and learn the deen of allah and in every city we visit we see huge crowds mashallah la quwwata illa billah so may allah bless nigerians may allah bless your country may allah render all of us back to his deen and keep us all steadfast on his straight path building blocks to a better society. Imam Malik, who is the greatest Imam of Medina, Malik ibn Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, once said, لا يصلح أمر هذه الأمة إلا بما صلح به أولها Nothing will sit right the affairs of this ummah towards its end or generations after generations other than what is said it right in the first place. This ummah had been successful. This ummah had been prospering and victorious during the time of the Prophet and the rightly guided Khulafa and generations after generations. But we experience ups and downs. When we experience the downs, then we need to return back to the means which granted success to this Ummah, which made this Ummah superior, victorious, successful, and a role model to the rest of the Ummah. And the story begins not only from the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever he was commissioned with the Prophet, no, it begins way earlier than that. When Adam and Eve have been sent down to earth, and then they related, and they invoked Allah the Almighty to accept the repentance and take them back to heaven. So in verse number 123, chapter number 20, which is Surah Taha, the Almighty Allah responded to them saying, قَالَتْ بِقَى مِنْهَا جَمِيعًا بَعْضُكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوٍ 
فإما يأتينكم مني هدى فمن اتبع هداي فلا يضل ولا يشقى ومن أعرض عن ذكري فإن له معيشة ضنكا ونحشره يوم القيامة أعمى So the Almighty Allah said to them, wait, whenever you receive guidance from me, for those who shall simply follow my guidance, you shall receive two privileges, one in this life and one in the year after. فَلَا يَظِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى Whoever follows the divine guidance at any time, they shall never go astray, no suffer any of distress in this life, and in the hereafter you will be saved and eligible for salvation. This guidance has been presented in every divine re revelation that the Almighty Allah revealed to any of His prophets. The only divine revelation which stands today as a witness that this is the Word of God, without any alteration, without any change, is the Quran, which is the everlasting miracle. Sometimes the Quran is described by Allah as hudan, guidance. Guidance for the righteous. Sometimes it is described as mawa'ila, admonition. And sometimes it is described as shifa'un lima fi sudur, healing for what is in the breast. And sometimes the Almighty Allah describes His word and His guidance and His revelation as nur. So the Almighty Allah says in the beginning of Surah Ibrahim, كتاب أنزلناه إليك لتخرج الناس من الظلمات إلى النور بإذن ربهم إلى صراط العزيز الحميد. We have sent this book unto you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, in order to drive people out of darkness into light. By the name of the Lord to put them on the straight path, the path of the Almighty, the Almighty of praise. Those of you who learn Arabic, when they look at the word Azulumat versus the vocabulary An Nur, they realize right away that Azulumat is singular or plural. Azulumat. Plural. What is the singular word for zulumat? Zulma. Then the word nur is singular, which means darkness could be many ways, many theories, many different ways of life. People do not recognize that they are living in darkness until they see the light. And the light is only one. You stand no chance if you look for light in other than the divine guidance. Then in verse number 164 of Surah Al-Imran, the, the closest that a worshiper can be to his Lord, his maker, his cherisher, nourisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer, is when he is in the condition of prostration, he or she. If that's the case, when I get into sujood, a true believer becomes more conscious because of the love you have for Allah. True believer becomes more conscious of the duration of that sujood and the feeling in the heart. Am I just getting done with it quickly because I've got another commitment or can the rest of everything wait until I'm done here? Attitudes. 
Small change will make a big difference. Massive difference because it's born out of the love of Allah. Do you love Allah? Everyone will put their hands. Who loves Allah? Put your hands up. We all love Allah. May Allah love us back. Are you prepared to make a small effort so that that love can be more and more genuine? Because in my life, I've seen a lot of young boys and girls and even the older ones say, I love you. And sometimes they say it with tajweed to make it sound so acceptable to them. I love you. To make it sound like really, I, uh, you know what, uh, and now your eyes are half closing, you become a little bit this way, your mouth, your voice starts changing, I love, you're expressing with your tongue what is not even in your heart. How many people say, I love you? Do you remember years ago, I said something, it actually went viral. I said, if someone can say LOL without laughing, they can easily say, I love you without loving. Simple. I, how many of us are guilty of just writing LOL and you haven't even laughed, you're frowning, you're even sad. And you put emojis where you are like laughing, laughing, but you, you with a straight face completely. Am I right or wrong? Those little yellow faces which are, you know, the other way around with two uh, laughing, meaning with, with the eyes that are almost tearing of laughter. Am I right? And you're not laughing. I've done that so many times. I keep doing it. May Allah forgive me. It just means what you said is of laughter. If humankind can do that without laughing, surely they can tell you, I love you without laughing. Don't be deceived. Do not be deceived. That when someone says, I love you, it is just a claim that needs to be proven. It is a claim that needs to be proven. It is basically something you, you are claiming. If you have not proved it, it is not true. The same applies in your relationship with Allah. I love Allah. I love Allah, but when Allah made things haram, when Allah made things haram, they don't even change anything in you. And when Allah's made something obligatory, it doesn't really change you in any way. You don't give it importance. That's not love. We can do better. My brothers, my sisters, I can do better, inshallah. And I promise I will, by the will of Allah. May Allah strengthen me. And may Allah strengthen all of us. We can all do better. Why am I saying this? Because we want to rebuild society and we want to rebuild the nation and every nation needs to be rebuilt. We want to rebuild the Ummah. When I say rebuild, it is already depicting that we have got to a level where we feel we've degraded ourselves. And you know what? We are not where we are supposed to be. Let's rebuild it. One of the cornerstones of it is to develop this relationship with Allah because it is holistic. It is complete. When Allah just tells you Taqwa Allah, you know how powerful that statement is. The Prophet ﷺ explains to us two simple qualities that will be the biggest reason for people entering Jannah. Taqwa Allah wa husnul khuluqi. He says that relationship, I call it developing the correct relationship with Allah. It has a deep meaning, a very deep meaning, but people say fear, the fear of Allah. I explained to you, it's probably, it should be born out of tremendous love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, some people say the consciousness of Allah, all this is correct. Be conscious of Allah, develop the correct relationship with Allah. When you have the correct relationship with Allah and you have great character and conduct, you deserve paradise. That's according to the hadith. You are the most deserving of paradise. I promise you, if Allah has said you and I are deserving of paradise with certain qualities, we will have a taste of something brilliant and good on earth before we go to the hereafter. You reckon all the rules of Islam and all the do's and don'ts and the obligations and the prohibitions. Do you know that if a person really adheres to what they are taught, they will start to taste the contentment and the beauty of this world, even if they're jobless, unemployed, and they don't really have money for the next meal. May Allah create ease for all of us. They start tasting contentment. They are happy. They adjust their lives and they are still saying Alhamdulillah. We've been, I have seen people who have a leg amputated. Years ago, when I was a student, we visited one of our teachers after a motor, motor car accident and he lost his legs. And he said, Alhamdulillah, I lost my legs. And I was young and I thought this man's making a mistake. He must be sedated because of the painkillers. He doesn't know what he's saying. He's saying, Alhamdulillah, I lost my legs. And someone said, 
inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. He said, the reason I say Alhamdulillah is I have used these legs to walk to the masjid five times a day for the last 20 years. And I believe I tried my best and inshallah I've succeeded never to use these legs to walk towards haram. That's when I was moved. I said, whoa, these are the people. Rijal. Minal mu'minina sadaqu from among the believers are those who have fulfilled their promise unto Allah. Today we made a promise to Allah as well. Oh Allah, I love you. Help me to change. I promise I'm going to get closer to you. Make it easy for me to get closer to you. And then start making an effort. There are those who promised Allah we will never use our limbs and organs in wrong and in haram. Oh Allah, make it difficult for me to sin. And Allah will make it difficult for you. Oh Allah, wherever my nafs and my soul wants me to meander and wants me to lose the way to you, make it difficult for me to sin so that I never ever spoil my relationship with you. Allahu Akbar. You want to build society, you don't have a relationship with Allah, it's impossible. I remember my father years ago saying, you cannot work with a person who doesn't have taqwa. You cannot work with them. You can't. You need to have basic taqwa. If you don't have the consciousness of Allah, you're going to rob me, cheat me, deceive me. You're going to create obstacles. You're going to cause problems. You're not going to be honest and genuine. You will be hypocritical. The minute you have a consciousness with Allah, I promise you, it's the beginning of such a beautiful life. You may go through hardship. Allah makes it easy. Look at the companions of Rasulullah How many hardships did they face right at the beginning? Starting from the people of Mecca. The early Muslims struggled the most. But they were content. They were content. Bilal ibn Rabah and the story of Ahadun Ahad. Ahadun Ahad is amazing. We know it. We learned it since we were kids. And I tell you, it's a story of unwavering faith in Allah. I don't care what you're doing. For me, it's my door. You, if you're going to kill me, end of the day, I'm going to go back to my Lord. And I think of man ahabba liqa Allahi ahabba Allahu liqa. With us, no one's telling you we're going to kill you. You might face small persecutions here and there. In fact, you're lucky to be living in an Islamic environment in some communities and societies. And yet we don't pray. We don't dress appropriately. We do things that are wrong. And when we do things that are wrong, we are human. We may falter. We don't even think at night, you know, what I did was actually wrong. So to ponder over your actions and to try and promise to effect change and do something about it is part of the rebuilding. We have societies and communities that have crumbled simply because we lost the essence of living in the society. We don't enjoy it anymore. People don't want to deal with Muslims. I met a brother a few days ago in Lagos. He said, do you know the northerners in some places, certain people from certain parts don't want to do business with people from the same part. They say, I prefer to go somewhere else and deal with this person. That because we are being robbed, we are being cheated. I said, I refuse to believe what you're saying. He says, just thank Allah you're not Nigerian. I said, how can you say that when Nigeria is my favorite place, right? I said, let's leave it at that. It's okay. I don't need to know more. But the reason I'm mentioning it is you might know what I'm saying. Who knows? If people as believers do not want to do business with one another because they fear being shortchanged, then we have a problem. It should be the other way around. Take a look at some people of other faiths. They will only do business with people from their own church or from their own synagogue as a starting point. May Allah make it easy to be able to build community and society, honesty, integrity, connection with Allah, cornerstones, be upright, learn to want goodness for others because Allah has created a system whereby there is, there are those who have and those who don't have. It's a test for both. Those who have, it's a test. What are you going to do with it? And are you going to look out for those who don't have? Because a day passed in your life when you didn't have someone somehow, somewhere favored you. And if you did not see the favor of the person, you need to recognize it was always the favor of Allah. How did you become wealthy? 
The answer is only one, Allah. إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُهُ لَا تَفْرَحْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَرِحِينَ Here is the example of Qarun. Allah blessed him with so much, he didn't relate it to Allah. Allah gave him so much, but he says he was arrogant, haughty. He says, أُوتِيتُهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي All that I have is because I'm a sharp guy. I'm a good businessman. I'm very shrewd and I'm whatever, whatever he might have said. Allah says, he says, I've been given this because of my own knowledge. Who gave him the brain in the first place? Who gave him the opportunity to be at the right place at the right time? I promise you, ask some of the wealthiest of the lot. What will they tell you? Allah blessed us because we were born somewhere, because we we're in the right place, right time. We interacted with some people. Sometimes you're sitting next to someone now and you haven't even greeted them. If you were to greet them, who knows who they might be and who knows what type of a partnership they might be between you in business, in business. Yet you've just come for the peace and unity convention. You were seeking the door of Allah. Allah says, my slave, I know you need a little bit of the dunya. I'm going to throw a lot of it at you only to see what are you going to do with the excess? Will you look at those who don't have just like when you didn't have and will you reach out to them to empower them to build people? How many of us can build others today? We look at those who don't have as much as we do. We do not greet them. That's where society is crumbling. We don't greet. No salam. Why? How could you greet? You come from an upper class. What upper class? If you haven't greeted, you've dropped your class to the bottom. That's what it is. أيها الناس أفشوا السلام وأطعموا الطعام وصلوا الأرحام وصلوا بالليل والناس نيام تدخلوا جنة ربكم بسلام حديث of عبد الله بن سلام رضي الله عنه Oh people, he heard the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and you know what? He was tiptoeing and looking at this man that everyone was welcoming and he heard this is a Prophet and he was one of the religious people and the leaders of the Jews, one of their teachers and rabbis. And he looks and he sees this face and one of the first things he heard from this beautiful mouth is oh people spread the peace spread the salam the term salam means so many things i'm not going to go into it right now but spread the peace spread the greeting and on top of the greeting ensure that you are genuine in it when i say assalamu alaikum to you i mean i guarantee you i will not harm you that's the meaning of it when you say peace be upon you what does it actually mean it means from me, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, there will be peace, no war, no harm, no deception, no cheating, no dis nothing. Peace, peace be upon you. From what? From me and my harm. I'm not going to harm you. Wallahi, if we were genuine just with that salam, we would have not needed to use the term rebuild society or nation because it would already be built. Afshu salama, spread the salam. Afshu salama wa at'imu ta'ama and feed the food, feeding food to everyone who start with your circle, your family interact with you because they are young and they don't want that feeling around them. So they don't even want to see your face and you didn't realize it's just the way you spoke. So no matter how old you are, if you're conscious of Allah, you are worried about how you speak, how you communicate. What's the difference between us and the animals? Is it not the brain to begin with? Allah has given us a more sophisticated brain. And Allah has given us abilities. If you cannot think before you speak and express what you'd like using the best possible way of saying it, then you need help. You need to improve. May Allah help us. This is where instead of shut up, you can say keep quiet. One example. This is where instead of saying get lost, you can say please, whatever else. I don't even know how to say it because I don't normally say it. But if you're not going to be conscious with your tongue, how is, how is it going to be possible? Your own family is not being built and you want to talk about rebuilding the nation and the communities and so on. It's not coming. Watch, watch your tongue. Simple things can break. And equally important, simple things can build. But you need to be conscious. You have that relation with Allah. Do you know a sign of a connection with Allah is when you realize who you are? Who am I? I am a brother to all of you here. That's what it is. 
The one who made me made you. If I want to impress him, I need to have a good relation with you. I see some of the young people jostling sometimes as we're walking past. It's impossible to greet everyone. And sometimes, you know, we have a few brothers walking with us. Some of them are a little bit rough and they might push you out of the way. Whenever I see someone being pushed a bit, I pause for a moment. I say, my brother, how are you? Give them salam alaikum. Shake your hand. You know what? I don't want you to be hurt. If I had it my way, I would walk alone. One man. One man. I don't need anyone to walk around me because we are in Nigeria. One of the safest places on earth. Especially in this hall. Anyone feeling unsafe? Not even one. MashaAllah. But there you are. When you realize that everyone is made by Allah the same way Allah made you, that is when problems begin to resolve. You look at the political crisis in the Middle East today. A group of people think that they are God's gift to the universe. And that's why they belittle the others to the degree that they really think these are not even humans. That's why we have a massive problem. The day they believe that we were all created the same way and we have equal rights and we are equal human beings, it's the beginning of the end of the problem. It needs to happen. May Allah Almighty protect us from haughtiness. That was Karun. What was he saying? He says, there we are. I am the one. It's me, my brain. His people told him, don't be arrogant, don't be haughty. Allah doesn't like those who are haughty. You want to impress Allah, then forget about pride. Pride is prohibited. لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من خردل من كبر. Here is the Prophet ﷺ saying, the one in whose heart a mustard seed's weight worth of pride is, will not enter paradise. Imagine a mustard seed weight. That's almost very little. You have some pride, take it off, remove it. You are just like everyone else. Yes, Allah may have given you more than someone. That shouldn't be a reason that pride enters your heart. The companions were worried when they heard about that hadith of pride. They were worried about their clothing and their conveyance and so on. Everyone loves a good house and a nice car and lovely clothing. And the Prophet ﷺ explained it beautifully to say that's not pride. To have the best is not, it does not automatically make you proud. But when you despise people and reject the truth, then you have a problem. Then you are proud. The truth is glaring you in the face and you are rejecting it completely. It's a sign of arrogance. Other people are around you and you despise them, belittle them, mock at them. It's a sign of arrogance. Didn't I say moments ago, watch your tongue, watch how you speak within your circles, within your families, to the young ones, no matter who you, and from the young ones amongst each other. Let one family among our extended families not think that they are more preferred or better than the other, because then you have a major problem. Everyone is blessed uniquely by Allah. There is nobody who is not blessed. Allah, if you know that it is good for me, my deen, etc, etc, make it easy for me, give it to me, write it for me and facilitate it and give me barakah in it. And if you know it is not good for me, for my deen and my life and whatever else and my future and so on, then distance it from me, distance me from it, create a barrier between us and make me happy with your decree. It took her some time and then she started looking beyond what she wanted. She says, I've been crying to Allah. Oh, Allah grant me. You said Allah may grant me better. Allah has granted me way better than what I asked. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And I share this with you to give hope to those who feel that Allah is not answering. Wallahi, he knows better than you what is best for you. So keep on trusting him and trust him and thank him. For indeed, it is through gratitude that you will achieve. Thank Allah. Everyone's complaining about every little thing. Thank Allah. May Allah grant us. So pray at night when everyone is asleep. What will happen with the combination of all these things? Allah says, we will grant you entry into paradise with ease. Abdullah ibn Salam says, when I heard these words and I saw his face, Looking at his face, I knew this is not the face of a liar. Not the face of a liar. Sometimes you see the face of a person and you know this one is a liar. 
if you can recognize one who doesn't lie, you can surely recognize one who lies. But you need to have some connection with Allah to be able to do that. It's like someone saw the movie years ago that came out called The Message. Some of you might have watched it. The Message. What is it about? The seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu the life of the Prophet Sallallahu it's called The Message. And I heard someone say, did you see the nur on Hamza? Did you see the nur on the face of Hamza? Anhu? I got up, I said, my brother, that was Anthony Quinn. He's actually a non-Muslim actor. It goes to show that what nur is, you need nur to recognize nur. The people of virtue are recognized by people of similar virtue. Sometimes when you're connected with Allah, you can pick up certain things. A true believer has a firasa. They have an understanding, some understanding that is slightly deeper than that of the rest because he's connected with Allah. And he looks with the light of Allah, Allah shining something for him. He can see, she can see a little bit more. You can pick things up sometimes. And you come into town and look at the nur on the face of Anthony Quinn. Come on, my brother. Come on. It's like watching, what do they call it here? Nollywood, right? And you say, oh, mashallah, subhan, that's an actress, man. That's an actor. May Allah Almighty protect us. Amen. So Abdullah ibn Salam says, I looked at the face, I knew it was not the face of a liar. I heard these wonderful, beautiful, powerful, amazing words. Jawami'ul kalim, short, small words with massive meanings. I knew this is the messenger of Allah that we are waiting for. He goes to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and declares his faith. We've heard all these ahadith. We are believers with faith, but we are dwindling in our faith. May Allah strengthen us. May Allah strengthen me to begin with, and all of us. Imagine the peace we are searching for. When you develop a feeling for others and you realize and recognize that they are the creatures of Allah created in a similar way that you were created. So if your life is all about impressing Allah and showing Allah who you are and how good you are because you want to impress him, to invoke his love, to actually get his blessings. What will you do? You will be so kind and so good to all the creatures of the same Allah. That is when you are truly liberated. Because why? I want to impress Allah, but Allah made these people, everybody who I met on the street, who I meet, who speak good about me, who don't speak good about me, who are kind, who are not kind, who are good, who are not good, who are honest, who are dishonest, who are upright, who are not upright. Allah made all of them. How I am with them would actually either impress my Lord or not. So let me deal with them in a beautiful, impressive way. I don't mean that when there is a criminal, you still need to be good to the criminal. Robber enters your home, you, you, you tell them, Salaamu Alaikum, what would you like to see? <laughs> you know, I believe in Allah. He made you, He made me. Please take what you want. No, please do not get that wrong. Sometimes you need to crack a whip in a beautiful way. When it comes to the penal code in Islam, Allah Almighty has dictated that it be thoroughly investigated if the person is found guilty of the crime not beyond reasonable doubt but with no doubt at all they need to be made an example of in order for it to be a deterrent for everyone else that's islam you know the penal code in islam the difference is if you can prove it beyond reasonable doubt and not without any doubt then you cannot get to the had because there is a small shubha there is a small doubt in it, even if it is a minor doubt, the punishment becomes lesser. You might, it might be a jail term, it might be some other term, but what Allah says is, when something has been proven without doubt, you see, if you go to the courts today, they will jail someone for 15 years based on beyond reasonable doubt. That's why in America, mostly, you find cases of people who are freed after 20 years of wrong imprisonment. Have you seen those? Because why? They just said beyond reasonable doubt and it's done in Islam beyond any doubt whatsoever. Then you can do something. 
May Allah Almighty protect us. So an example is made in order for it to be a deterrent for others. So what I'm showing you is it doesn't mean that because you are so merciful, you should not stand up for justice. Look what Allah says. Allah instructs you to be just and to be kind and to give your relatives. Three instructions. Justice, kindness and giving your relatives. Look after them. Why does justice come before kindness? Because it is not kind to let go of justice. It's not kindness. I can't say, oh, this person, you know, just forgive them. Never mind. They stole, they stole two million from you. Two million naira. Just forgive them. As it is, the naira has dropped quite a bit. Just forgive them. By the time you get it back, the two million will only be worth a bottle of Coke. Firstly, I don't drink Coke. I stopped. I've lost a few kilos as a result. I feel healthier. I invite you to stop too. MashaAllah. May Allah bless you. Amen. Are we going to stop? Yes. Allah, Allah, Allah. You get a triple reward if, if you know. But thereafter, you can't come to me and tell me just, it's okay, you know what, have a be, just be kind. Justice comes first. When you have served that, then yes, we are all kind. It's kind to be just. In Allah, يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَةِ you don't just go to a person, you know what, it's okay. Someone was divorced and the kids were taken away by one party and the other party was told you're never going to see your kids and they keep telling him, it's okay, it's okay, just, just have a big heart. What do you mean big heart? I need to fight for my children, man. I need to ensure that whatever is supposed to happen, happens because children need both parents divorced or not divorced. One of the biggest gifts you can give your children is for them to be able to see you and your spouse living in goodness and how you interact. Many men are not even interested. And some of the women have lost the interest as a result. When your children watch you as they grow up, interact with each other in a loving, kind, beautiful way. Wallahi, it empowers them. You want to build community, invest in your own children. Invest in your children. Look at how Allah tells you, your relatives, your relatives, your who's, who are the closest to you? Your parents, your spouse, your children, what else? Closest, then your brothers and sisters, and who else? And then the broader family, but it starts off somewhere. Charity begins at home. That's the reason why the Prophet, peace be upon him, tells us, khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli. The best from amongst you are those who are best to their family members, starting with a wife. And in the case of the wife, starting with your own husband. When you are good there and they can bear witness that you are good, wallahi, you are really good. Because they see you throughout the day, throughout the night, they see you good mood, bad mood. So when I'm in a bad mood, oh, you need to be careful. When I'm in a bad mood, you can just stay aside. See, my friends are laughing because they know, they, they're with me. They say, this man, when he's in a bad mood, just, just come, just relax. Keep a bit of a distance and give him his space. We all get moods, moody. You're not normal if you don't. <laughs> Look at me covering my own back. May Allah protect us. May Allah strengthen us, really. But what I mean is, we need to realize those you live with in your closest of circles know you better than others. They know you better. The Prophet ﷺ clearly says, when they can bear witness for you, I promise you, you're a good person. You're a good person. Because you know why? The circles that you are the most intimate with are saying, this man is really a good man. Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless us. Amen. Allah grant us goodness. So, are we going to invest, inshallah, in our own children? You know what? The yes came from this side, not this side. Maybe some of these young men are not even married yet. But you can say yes, Allah will bless you with the children. Are we going to invest in our children, inshallah? Amen. Wallahi, wallahi, we promised Allah. When, when the Sahaba anhum, were making promises, they were massive promises. Promises of dying in the cause of Allah. We just made a little promise to say, you know what? Invest in your family members. Learn to bring up your children with good qualities. They are the future. They will make up society, community. You notice the attendance here. As the years pass, if the attendance becomes smaller and smaller, it's because we haven't succeeded in raising the new generations to give them the importance of such gatherings. 
We don't realize it. They won't come, they won't attend because they will be elsewhere. Whereas I have seen communities in the West, the young ones are more keen on such gatherings than the older ones. Wallahi, I promise. Imagine, don't think for a moment that Allah will be stuck, na'udhu billah, because of your lack of or non-interest in the deen of Allah. No chance. If you don't come, Allah will take somebody else to come. If you didn't occupy the space, it's going to be occupied by someone else. I always tell people, you abandon a teaching, Allah brings others who will not abandon the teaching, the teachings in their tens or hundreds or thousands. If you left something that you were supposed to do, let me give you a simple example. Those who've abandoned, may Allah make strength in all of us, this is just by way of example. Those who've abandoned their hijab, for whatever reason it may be, Allah as a direct result of that one abandonment has brought up, created 10 minimum, 10 others or a hundred others who will don the hijab. You abandon your deen as a direct result of that. Allah brings about another 10 or a hundred or more or less who will take that space. If you are going to turn away, Allah will replace you with others and they won't be like you. Allah will replace. So don't think I abandoned. You were rejected by Allah. Does he need you? Wallahi, he doesn't. Wallahu al-ghani wa antum al-fuqara These very words of Allah are just preceding the ones I read earlier. What is Allah saying? Allah is independent. You are the ones in need, meaning us. We are in need. Allah is not in need. You can pray all your life. I want to end with one beautiful, powerful narration. Where the Prophet ﷺ tells us that, you know what? If Allah had to give from the first human being to the last human being, the billions and the trillions and the quadrillions and the pentillions and the nonillions and the decillions of humans that must have passed on earth right up to the last one after we are gone. If Allah had to give each one of them and every jinn from the beginning of jinn kind to the end of jinn kind, every single thing that they ever desire and ask for. And Allah had to give them all that which they wanted from the beginning to the end. Allah says, it does not displace the kingdom of Allah from the kingdom of Allah, except that which is similar to when a pin or a needle is put into the ocean and taken out. Allah. Do you know, there is something called the James Webb Telescope. Please check it out, follow it, download the app and have a peek at what's going on. They launched it some time back. Go into space, go as far as you can, bring back images, send back live images. We want to see what there is. Wallahi, this telescope's been going and going and every time it's going, it's discovering planets huger than ever before, non-stop. Thousands, millions, billions, trillions, it's just not ending like the sand in the desert. Do you know that? It's a fact. It's true. Go check it. I was speaking to people and I said, you know the power of Allah, these stars that you see in the skies, do you know that the nearest one is actually approximately four and a half light years away? You know what that means? What is a light year? A light year means you go out and you see it, you can see the light, the light of the star. This, that light took four and a half years to get to your eyes, which means what you are seeing is actually an image from four and a half years back. That's the meaning of light years away. And if the nearest one is four and a half light years, it could perhaps not be there. And you're only seeing it as though it's there, but it's not there anymore because four and a half years later, you'll discover, oh, it's not there. Allahu Akbar. That is Allah's creation. It's mind boggling. And who are you messing with? Allah. Allah says, you know what? The last part Allah sebagai tujuan hidupnya Rasulullah sebagai teladannya Al-Quran dan Sunnah panduan hidupnya Bukan kita
cita-cita tertingginya Bumi adalah sebuah kelelahan Ke surga yang mengikutinya Ke neraka yang menjaga Alhamdulillah, it's a pleasure to be with you all. Thank you for your beautiful smiles. I was telling the brothers earlier today, I said this country should be known as the, the country of a million smiles. Everyone is so, everyone is so generous. Everyone is so generous with their happiness and they're generous with their smile and they're generous with their warmth and they're generous with their welcome. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless and accept from you, bless your families and bless this nation. Allahumma ameen. Being that this is the One Ummah Conference, I have a poem called Ummah of One and I'd like to share it with you. It goes like this. Sudan is my hometown. Jerusalem is my heart. I flash a Syrian smile. I've been Egyptian from the start. My kindness comes from Pakistan. My style, Senegalese. Yemen and Somalia join two continents at my knees. A Nigerian mind, Libyan legs, Arabian disposition. Moroccan passion, Turkish fashion, Indonesian precision. Wherever Allah is worshipped are my people. I conclude English esteem, French cuisine, American attitude. I have history in Spanish soil and Malian sand, a future shining from Khurasan. My present is where I stand, my eyes peer from Kashmir towards a Malaysian rising sun. My body's indivisible. I'm an ummah of one. Allahu Akbar. I'm sorry for making it hard for you. Now I have a question for you. When Nigerians hear poetry, how do you guys respond? Oh, you guys don't respond, okay. You guys don't respond. In America, they do finger snapping. Try the finger snap, try that out. In Sudan, where I'm from, I don't think anybody will be able to do this, but you, you flick your finger on your other finger and you go like this. Okay, you say, oh shit, oh shit. Then generally Muslims, they usually say, Allah Akbar. Try that out. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Usually have one guy who makes a big takbir and he goes, takbir. And everybody goes, Allah Akbar, right? Then Pakistanis, they told me, we go like this, vah vah. So try that out, vah vah. So Nigerians, do you have anything? No, you guys are just making it up now. Okay. You're trying to come up with something right now. No, no, no. It's okay, inshallah, next time. I am tasked with speaking about a beautiful topic. You know, one of the interesting things to me in the past two days that I've been here, I was telling some of the brothers earlier as well that it seems like everybody that I meet, all of the young brothers that I met here, they all have a business, mashallah. Everybody is doing something. And that is beautiful that a person seeks to earn. But the Muslim is given an advantage while we are going out into this world and seeking to earn. And that advantage is a belief that we have about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslims worldwide, as they go out into the world seeking from Allah's bounty, we believe something very, very particular about Allah. And that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a razzaq He is the provider. And with your permission, I want to speak about this name for a few minutes. What does a razzaq mean? 
When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls himself a razzaq I want you to know that risk is two types of provision. Allah is a razzaq for everyone and everything. Allah says, وَمَا مِنْ دَعْبَةٍ There is no creature on this earth إِلَّا عَوَ اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who provides for it. Every single person on this earth, whether they are a Muslim or a non-Muslim, whether they are righteous or whether they are wicked, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides every bird, every animal, every fish, every insect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for everything. But then, there is what's called a specific provision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for the believers. The closer you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more He provides. But what does that provision mean? Does provision mean more money in my pocket? The more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me, the more wealthy I am. Do we believe in a gospel of prosperity? No. But this is something that is way more comprehensive than just money. Your health is risk. Your iman is risk. The fact that you are sitting here today when there are thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people in this city that are not here right now and you are benefiting from a good word, that is risk. The fact that you are learning something new is risk. The fact that you prayed Muhammad today is risk. The fact that you have read Quran and fasted Ramadan, all of that is risk. But it's not just that. Your family is risk. Your happiness is risk. Your personality is risk. And that's why I always ask people a question. And I say to them, who has, if, if people think this is just money, I tell them, I said, who has more money? You or Bill Gates? And most people, actually everybody I've ever asked so far, they've all said Bill Gates has more money. But then I simply ask them the question, okay, now who is more blessed, you or Bill Gates? And when you ask people that question, then they pause and they say, hold on. I don't know anybody who's more blessed than me because my parents are part of the blessing that I have. And my siblings that I love so much are part of the blessing that I have. And my children are part of the blessing that I have. And my iman is part of the blessing that I have. And my health is, and my age, and my strength, and all of that is part of the blessing that I have. So I don't know anybody who's more blessed than me. There are a few hadith that I want to share with you. Number one, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam defines for us a few portions of risk that many times we don't pay attention to. And I want you to count them with me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith that's reported by a tirmidhi he says, مَنْ أَصْبَحَ مِنْكُمْ آمِنًا فِي سِرْبِهِ Whoever of you woke up today safe in their dwelling, مُعَافًا فِي بَدَنِهِ Healthy in their body, they have enough food for today. It's like they have the entire world in their pocket. How many blessings did the Prophet ﷺ just mentioned? Who can answer me? How many? Three? Does anybody say more than three? Does anybody say four? Does anybody say five? Does anybody say six? Does anybody say I have no 